bombshell report from the New York Times that President Trump actually tried to fire special counsel Robert Mueller comes as the president himself is likely to be called to answer questions. Just yesterday, again, prior to leaving for Europe, Trump expressed his willingness to cooperate with Mueller. Are you going to talk to Mueller? I'm looking forward to it, actually. You want to? Do you have a date Here, here's set? Here's the story. Just so you set, There's Mr. been no President? collusion whatsoever. Yeah. There's no obstruction whatsoever. And I'm looking forward to it. Do you have I, a date set, Mr. President? I, I don't know. No, I th guess you're talking about two or three weeks, but I would love to do it. Here to talk about it, Frank Figluzzi, back with us, former FBI Assistant Director for Counterintelligence, who in the past has worked for Robert Mueller. He's these days an MSNBC News national security analyst. And Chuck Rosenberg worked under both Robert Mueller and James Comey when they were running FBI. He's also a former U.S. attorney himself and a current MSNBC contributor. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Frank, you went to law school. How does this possibly add to an obstruction argument? Yeah, so a key element of an obstruction of justice charge is intent. So tonight, in the long string of conduct that we've had the president uh, play out that all point to obstruction, it's this one, this intent to fire someone because you've learned they're looking at you for obstruction. It actually sounds like a bad law school exam question. You know, some, so you fire someone because they're looking at you for obstruction. Is that obstruction? And tonight, that gives us a glimpse into the president's intent, deeper into his head, and it helps shape the way we perceive all those other things that he's done. The firing of Comey, pressure on Sessions to, to rec not recuse himself from the Russia inquiry, the, the drafting of a letter that says the Trump Tower meeting was all about child adop adoption. Tonight, in case you needed any further shading of what his intentions were with those, we have now a clear intent to fire the guy who's investigating him. Now, Chuck, um, every profile I have ever read of Robert Mueller indicates he is made of between 10 and 30 percent Kevlar. He's all but immune to personal slights. Um, he may find this tidbit more curious than hurtful. But what does he do with the knowledge of how close he came to being a former special counsel? And how, if at all, does this fit in these negotiations, let's not forget, are going on between Mueller and the White House as to what form the president's testimony will take. Yeah, let me take your uh, second question first, Brian. In terms of negotiations, um, here's the analogy I was thinking of. It's like standing on a street corner, looking up and seeing a piano about to fall on your head and trying to negotiate with the piano about the laws of gravity. <laughs> There's not really a negotiation here. Uh, Mueller holds the cards. They can talk about uh, a voluntary interview. Uh, they might talk about where that takes place. But in the end, if the president doesn't agree to that, uh, he's going to get a subpoena to appear in a grand jury. And there are no negotiations. You show up and you either uh, assert the Fifth Amendment privilege not to incriminate yourself, or you answer the questions truthfully, or you lie and you add to the troubles against you. Uh, your first question, what does this do about the investigation? And does it, you know, uh, does it dissuade Mueller? Or does it um, you know, spur him on. This may sound like a weird answer, Brian. It doesn't do a thing. Um, the men and women of the FBI, and Frank knows this, uh, do their work. They're not out to get individuals. They're out to get facts. Uh, they're not crawled up uh, under a desk in the fetal position because somebody said something that was mean about them. And, and in this case, the president has taunted the FBI. He's tried to humiliate people. He's, tried to, he's fired one person and tried to fire another and they just keep coming. That's what federal agents and federal prosecutors do. They just keep coming. It's not going to have any effect at all. Frank, it really is unbelievable to hear it uh, in Chuck's words. We have a president who has criticized the FBI, trolled the FBI, attacked an individual civil servant at the FBI. There's a much larger meaning to all of this, right? And, and it's, a, it's a White House and an administration that's looking at their own self-interest and ignoring the longer game, which is preserving the key institutions in our society, the rule of law. So we're all focused 
on, on this instant investigation, but I'm deeply concerned with the, the, the deeper meaning of all of this, which is the eroding of trust and credibility in the institutions that separate us from the rest of the world. And Frank, um, if you're Trump's legal team, this may be a hard turn for you to make, uh, but imagine you are uh, either Mr. Dowd or Mr. Cobb. What's the worst thing about this story coming out? Well, I think they've painted themselves into a corner, right, because they have a client, the president, who keeps coming out and saying he's looking forward to the special counsel mm -hmm. interview. He, he thinks that Mueller will treat him fairly. So while one strategy otherwise might have been for the president to come out tomorrow and go, yeah, so what? I, I was thinking of firing him because I think there were some, some silly uh, uh, conflicts of interest, right, the golf club, et cetera. Well, now... If he comes out and says that, he's contradicting himself. So he's in a corner. He's probably going to defend his position, which is, no, I'm going forward with it. I deny that this happened. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes.